Hello everybody, this is Matt from Megalo Mobile. On my last video, I received a comment from Paul saying, Nice tutorial. Can you do a tutorial on making a main character auto-aim like the early Tomb Raider game character? That would be immensely helpful, cheers. P.S. My comment about auto-aim is for a 3D character for a mobile game I'm trying to make. Well Paul, the answer is yes. Yes I can. Before we get started, I'll let you know that I have included a Unity package that you can download and try out the scene for yourself, have a look around. There's also a link to an online version of the demo where you can play it in a browser. What I'm doing here is creating a basic 3D scene. I've got a few cubes that I've stretched out to make a floor, a player and an enemy, players in green, enemies in red, and I've given the player a blue arm. The important thing is to add a pivot point at the point that you want the blue arm to rotate around and make that a child of the player game object. The blue arm would then be a child of that pivot point. I've also made a quick animation for the enemy to show it walking up and down so that the blue arm has something to point at. But we will give the player some movement too. So heading over to the Unity documentation, there's a quick script for a player controller. So I make a player controller script, add that to the player, and then copy paste the player control script from the Unity documentation in there. And using the arrow keys, we can walk around the scene. The next thing to do is add a script to look at the enemy. So I've called this one the look at enemy script. It's gonna take a public game object, which is the enemy you're going to be looking at, a public float, the look speed, and we'll set that to 200 for the time being. In the update method, we're gonna set a vector three direction to be the enemy.transform.position, take the player's transform.position. A quaternion target rotation, and we set that equal to the quaternion look rotation of the direction. We're going to say quaternion look at equals quaternion.rotate towards transform.rotation target rotation time.delta time times look speed. And that's just saying that um, you're going to rotate from the current position to the target position over time. And then we set the transform rotation to equal look at. So if we attach the enemy to the player's script, then you can see that the blue arm is pointing at the red cube. So wherever we move around the scene, the blue arm will find where the enemy is and point towards it. Now, whilst that would be good enough for a turret on top of a tank, uh, what we're looking for is an actual player. So I'm gonna quickly um, build one out of cubes and here's one I made earlier. Um, as you can see I've made a quick walking animation for it. Animations are outside the scope of this current tutorial but here's a picture of the script anyway in case you want to implement it. The most important thing is that for each bit of the player which is meant to rotate, the head, the arms, the, the legs, the waist, I've added an additional pivot point and set the parts of the body that need to rotate as children of that pivot point. So attaching the script to the head of the player uh, shows that whilst it does point at the red cube, um, it doesn't really pay attention to which way the body is facing, and heads don't really act like that. And this is where the field of view comes into play. So first of all, we're going to need to establish the forward direction of the player, and we can get this from the player's game object. We also need to know the uh, field of view of the player, and for the head, I'm going to set that to be 90 degrees for the time being. We also need to know where the enemy is in relation to the player and the angle of the enemy in relation to the player's forward direction. Now, if that X angle is smaller than 90 degrees, then the player can see the enemy. If it's larger, then the player cannot see the enemy. So only when the X is smaller should the player be looking at the enemy. First of all, I'm gonna tidy up my script a little bit. I don't like the way that the target rotation and the look at uh, quaternions are inside the update method, so I'm going to put them in the head of the document. I've also got rid of the start method. So I'm going to take the public game object, field of view start point, and I'm also going to add in the public float max angle and set that to 90 degrees for the time being. I'm then going to make a bool. Is the enemy in the field of view? True or false? And that's going to take in a game object which for the purpose of this method, I'm gonna call the looker, but we're gonna field at the uh, field of view game object from above. Now, what's it going to do? It's gonna figure out the angle, and if the angle is smaller than the maximum angle allowed, it's going to return true, so the player can see the enemy, 
Otherwise, it's going to return false. In order to figure out the angle, what we need to do is take the um, a vector three, the target direction, and we're going to set that to be the enemy's transform position minus the player's transform position. There's going to be a float angle equals vector three angle, and that's going to take in the target direction and as well as the looker dot transform dot forward, that forward direction we gave it earlier. We're then going to wrap the um, update method in an if statement, and that's going to say that if the enemy is in the field of view and give it the field of view start point, if that's true, we're going to do the look at the enemy action that we've already written. Otherwise, we're going to set the target rotation to equal quaternion dot Euler zero 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 transform dot local rotation because we're not looking at the object in world space only it's as a reference to itself. And that's going to say quaternion dot rotate towards transform dot local rotation, target rotation, time dot delta time. And that's just saying move from one rotation to the target rotation over a certain period of time at a certain speed. Now that we've got our script written, we can add the player's field of view onto the player. And look, there you have it. It's looking at the red cube when it's facing it. When it's not facing the red cube, the player looks straight ahead which is the exact behavior that we're looking for. So next, I want to think about the other parts of the body that I want to attach the script to. I've got lots of different points I can attach it, and I'm going to start with the waist. So the waist's going to um, take the players uh, forward as the field of view, and it's going to have a smaller rotation. I think I'm going to set this one to 45, maybe. Yeah, that's looking much better. Although I would like it if the body didn't snap into position after it stopped finding the enemy in its field of view and had a bit of a, a buffer. So I'm going to make that now. I'm going to create another ball, call this one enemy in field of view, no reset point. And it's going to be exactly the same as the previous method, only going to set the uh, max angle there to a max angle reset point. And um, we're going to add that in at the top there as well, max angle reset. So that will mean that when the player is within the second field of view, if it's already past the first one, the player will stay turned until it exits the final field of view. It, it looks much better. I recommend um, using this too. So I'm going to add an else if statement to run this code if the first one fails. And it's just going to return. So you can see there, rather than instantly snapping around, it hovers around the, the midpoint before it loses sight of the enemy object. Next, we're going to try attaching the script to the arms. Now, if you do that and just um, plumb it up and give the arms the body's pivot, it will work, but you'll see that the arms clip through the body. It doesn't look very nice. So what I'm going to do is give the arms a different field of view. To visualize what that field of view is, I've just copied the arms in place, and I'm setting them at 45 degree angles. I know it looks a little weird for the time being, but I can tick them off to make them disappear. But that will give me an idea of where my field of view is, 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 is emanating from. And looking at that, that does work a bit better. Although for some reason, the angles seem a bit off. I'm just going to mess around with that in a second. Before I do though, what I want to do is make the arms point back down if they are at rest. So I'm making a bull called arm and if arms true, the arms will point down. Otherwise it's not an arm, so it points forwards. So I can just copy this um, three lines here paste them in there, make that 90. And what will happen there is the arms will rest at her side when she um, can't see it, and then point at the red cube. As you can see, my, my angle's a little bit off there. I think I'm gonna fix that. I think I set it to 45 degrees, and I think 30 is a, a, a better shout for this one. And that looks much better, although I don't like how she bends over when she's pointing at the cube. Um, I want the head to be able to look up and down and the arms to look up and down, but the body, maybe not. So I'm gonna say, public bull can lean equals true and set that as true in general. However, if uh, can lean is not true, then I'm going to run a bit of code here that says direction equals a new vector three. I'm going to keep the direction dot X the same, make the Y value zero and direction dot Z will be the same as well. So this just means that it won't rock on the axis for the body, but it will still for the head and for the arms. And there you have it. That's the exact functionality that we were looking for. 
All that's left now is to make some minor upgrades to the enemy. I've turned mine into a Tyrannosaurus Rex, as featured in Tomb Raider 2 starring Lara Croft. You can see that her arms are independent. In fact, every field of view is independent of the other one, which matches the functionality of the game as requested. As I mentioned earlier, the script, Unity package, and browser demo of the scene are all linked in the comments. All that's left to say now is thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit like, please hit subscribe, and check out some of my other videos, or even my game, Subspace Shortcuts, which is free to download on Google Play. I'll catch you next time.